And thank you so much for that kind word of introduction. Thanks to each and every one of you for tuning in today to the Preaching of the Cross radio broadcast. I'm Brother James, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. It's our purpose on these broadcasts to take the full half hour that God has given us and provided for us to preach and teach to you from the Word of God, to do our best to instruct you in the way of uh, righteousness. Uh, we are all for good Christian music. We are all for uh, good uh, Christian uh, storytelling and things of that nature. Uh, but there is only so much time available to us, and we want to take all that time that we possibly can in the principle and the primary thing, and that is teaching and preaching the Word of God. After all, the Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, first of all. Now, the Bible says that broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereout. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads unto life, and few there be that find it. The Bible says in the last days there shall be many false prophets that shall arise and deceive many. The Bible says the spirit of Antichrist has already gone out into the world. There is a spirit of truth and a spirit of error. And those that are in error, the Bible says that we are to rebuke them uh, and reprove them and to lift up our voice and cry. And let me say to you, before we even begin the lesson, which we will take in on today's program and then conclude, uh, God willing, on the program next time, let me just say to you that we, as Bible-believing Christians, are not hateful, we are not uncharitable, we are not unkind for obeying God and doing what God has told us to do and given us to do, if we are commanded by our Heavenly Father to warn you that you might be saved, to admonish you that you might be delivered, to make you aware of Satan's snares, traps, and devices so that you will not be ensnared thereby. We are not unkind and uncharitable for doing what God has told us to do. Now, when we speak out against anything, any group, any individual, any doctrine that is false, it is not because of hatred, it is not because of malice, it is not because of unkindness or a lack of charity. To the contrary, it's not because of unkindness or a lack of charity. To the contrary, it is because we love God enough to obey Him, we love His Word enough to believe it, and we love you enough to risk hurting your feelings in order to deliver you from some snare of the devil. Now I say all that to preface our study today, which is entitled The Masonic Lodge. The Masonic Lodge. And we, now just relax, settle down, take it easy. We are not going to bring you a lesson on why any man that belongs to the Masons, any woman that belongs to the similar uh, auxiliary functions of the Masonic Lodge, uh, we are not going to bring you a lesson on the, on, uh, and say that they are satanic on their way to hell and servants of the devil because we don't believe that. We believe that there are a lot of saved, born-again Christians that are part of this thing through ignorance. What we are going to do is present to you what the leaders of Freemasonry actually have to say about Masonry, about God, about the Bible, about spirituality, about spiritual things, and simply, carefully examine what they have said in light of the Word of God. We are not going to put any words in their mouth. We are going to tell you just exactly where the quotations are taken from that we are making reference to, we are going to tell you exactly where you can look these things up and find them out for yourself. So let's start in here with these uh, considerations. First of all, what according to the highest Masonic authority is Freemasonry? This is taken from Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Rite, page 741. Quote, 
Masonry is a search after light. That search leads us directly back, as you see, to the Kabbalah, Jewish Book of Occult Knowledge. In that ancient and little understood medley of absurdity and philosophy, the initiate will find the source of many doctrines and may in time come to understand hermetic, the hermetic philosophers, the alchemists, and the anti-papal thinkers of the Middle Ages and Emanuel Swedenborg. That's his answer to what Freemasonry is. A search after light through the book of Jewish occult knowledge back to philosophers and thinkers. Secondly, from what source does Masonry draw its secrets and symbols? Again, from Morals and Dogma, page 744, quote, All truly dogmatic religions have issued from the Kabbalah and returned to it. Everything scientific and grand in the religious dreams of all the Illuminati, Jacob Bohem, Swedenborg, St. Martin, and others, is borrowed from the Kabbalah. All Masonic associations owe it to their secrets and their symbols. Notice, Masonry is not said to be a biblical faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, Masonry does not claim to be a biblical Christianity taken from the Word of God. Thirdly, what is this Kabbalah? or Kabbalah, C-A-B-A-L-A -A -A, as it is spelled in English, K-A-B-A-L-A-H in the Hebrew. Answer from Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, page 153. Kabbalah is a medieval and modern system of theosophy, mysticism, and magic. Magic, as in the occult. Number four. Since Freemasonry has a system of religion, which is thoroughly dogmatic, as Sovereign Grand Commander Pike has stated above, then we ask, is it Christian? I'm going to quote now from Albert G. Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, page 162. Are you listening? Quote, Freemasonry is not Christianity, nor a substitute for it. You got it? I didn't say that. Don't get angry with me. I didn't say that. Albert G. Mackey, Dr. Albert G. Mackey, Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, page 162. Freemasonry is not Christianity nor a substitute for it. Got it? You better get it. You better listen. Don't get angry and turn the dial. Don't strive against the Spirit of God. Repent when the Word of God crosses you. Number five, the Bible appears on Masonic altars in supposed Christian lands. Is Masonry based upon the Bible? Well, let's see what the Digest of Masonic Law says, page 207 to 209. Quote, Masonry has nothing whatsoever to do with the Bible, that it is not founded upon the Bible, for if it were, it would not be Masonry. It would be something else. Now, how do you like that? From the Digest of Masonic Law, page 207-209, Masonry has nothing whatsoever to do with the Bible. That it, is, that, it is, that it is not founded upon the Bible, for if it were, it would not be Masonry, it would be something else. Therefore, you cannot be a Bible believer following the Bible, obeying the Word of God, submitted to the Word of God, and a participant in the Masonic Lodge religion. There is absolutely no two ways about it. According to the leaders of Masonry themselves, Masonry has nothing whatsoever to do with the Bible. Freemasonry is not Christianity. Number six. Since Freemasonry is not based upon the Bible, yet is a religious institution, as we have seen, then we ask, what is its revelation? Or what is its holy book? Answer from Morals and Dogma, page 715, 715. Quote, Beautiful around, stretches off every way 